Hi, I'm Lucas, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about banana plants and how to grow them. Bananas are one of my favorite plants to grow, and I'm excited to share some information on them. Did you know that banana plants are native to Southeast Asia? Recent evidence suggests that Southeast Asians brought banana plants to the New World, which is now Ecuador, around 200 BCE. Banana plants spread to other tropic and subtropic climates such as Africa, southern India, and the Americas. In the 16th century, banana plants were brought to Florida because of the subtropic climate. Wherever banana plants are grown, they have been an important food source to the people there because they provide an abundance of nutritious fruit with ease. Before we learn how to grow bananas, we first need to understand the phytomorphology. Phytomorphology is the study of the physical form and structures of plants. Banana plants are sometimes mistakenly called a tree, but they are actually herbaceous plants because they have no woody tissue. The trunk-like structure of the banana plant is called a pseudostem and it's formed by concentric, tightly packed layers of leaf sheaths. The leaf sheath is called a petiole. The leaf blade is called a lamina. New banana plants grow from the rhizome, also called a corm. A rhizome is an underground stem. About 200 to 500 fibrous roots grow from the rhizome. The roots spread about 5 feet deep and 16 feet laterally. When new banana plants pop up, they are called suckers or pups. And there are three types of suckers. At first, we'll see a peeper. The peeper is less than a foot tall and it will develop into either a sword or water sucker. Sword suckers are one to four feet tall and they have narrow leaves. Sword suckers will develop into fruitful pseudostems at maturity. Water suckers are one to four feet tall as well, but they have broad leaves. Water suckers are not well attached to the rhizome and generally produce weak plants and less fruit than sword suckers. A mat is the plant as a whole. This includes the pseudostems and the rhizome. The banana inflorescence, aka the flowering stalk, emerges from the pseudostem 10 to 15 months after planting. The first flowers to emerge are female. These flowers will develop without pollination into clusters of fruit called hands. While the bananas develop, male flowers will continuously emerge and attract many pollinators such as bees. In general, each pseudostem would only produce one inflorescence during its lifetime. Here we have one mat with two inflorescences. From the moment inflorescence begins, it takes about 80 to 180 days for the fruit to ripen. And just a quick fun fact, bananas are actually berries. When deciding where to plant a banana pup, we need to consider factors such as the temperature, water, wind, and soil conditions. The plant's growth is best between 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit and fruit growth at 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures at or above 98 degrees Fahrenheit might result in plant damage, such as leaf scorch. At 60 degrees Fahrenheit, plant growth slows down, and at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, plant growth stops. Below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, banana plants may get chilling or freeze damage. Choose a location that receives full sun. Light shade in the understory could be tolerated. Heavy winds cause banana leaves to shred. Winds over 25 miles per hour could cause the plant to fall over. In this case, the weight of the developing fruit helped in bringing down this plant. 
Banana plants require lots of water. They need about four to six inches of water per month for normal growth and production. Here we have a graph of the average rainfall in inches for Miramar, Florida. During our winter dry season, average rainfall does not reach four inches. Watering banana plants during these months could be helpful. The most important factor in the soil condition is the drainage. Banana plants require well-drained soil because stagnant water could kill the plant. Here we have millipedes breaking down food scraps in my compost bin. Banana plants appreciate soil that is high in organic material. Propagation is the process of creating new plants. You'll want to start off with a young sword sucker. The next step is to move around any mulch or plants that are around the pup in order to expose the soil. Use a sharp pony shovel to cut the rhizome between the pup and the mature pseudo stem. Once the rhizome is cut and the pup is separated, gently pull the banana pup from the soil. Make sure that the soil level is the same and that the soil is compressed. The final step is to give the plant a nice watering. In this installation, we have a blue java ice cream banana pup that is going to be planted next to this gutter downspout. This will provide the plant with more water. This banana plant will be in between two trees, a lemon zest mango and a Florida Haas avocado. Next to each are perennial peanut ground cover plants for support. After removing the St. Augustine grass, I dug a hole next to the plant. I used the soil that I dug out to raise the land where the banana plant is going to be. This step is optional. Here we have the plants in the ground. When transplanting, it is important that the soil level that the plants already have is the same when planted. Make sure to compress the soil by gently stomping around the plants. Next, I added a top dress of compost and biochar. Compost enriches the soil with nutrients such as nitrogen. Biochar helps the soil hold on to these nutrients. This palm was cut down to make room for the mango tree. I cut it up into smaller pieces to fit inside the hole. Over time, they would decompose and create healthy soil. Mulch is added as a top layer to protect the soil from the hot sun. When the mulch decomposes, the perennial peanut support plants will cover the ground. Gently stomp around the plants and mulch again to make sure that everything is compact. The final step is to water the plants. When the fruit reaches the normal size for that variety, they are ready for harvest. They will look plump with rounder edges. I like to harvest mine right when they begin to turn yellow. When doing so, the animals might get a snack before you. Depending on the height of the pseudo stem and the fruit size, the harvesting method varies. For example, with a tall pseudo stem like this, it might be better to first cut down the pseudo stem so you can reach the fruit. In this case, the pseudo stem is short and the fruit is easy to harvest. Use a sharp machete to cut the inflorescence. If the fruit is large and heavy, 
Have a friend help you carry it, or you could rest it on your shoulder. The fruit could be hung upside down in a shady, cool place to further ripen. We have paper towels wrapped up with a rubber band here in the bottom, so it doesn't leak the juice onto the floor. The hands could be cut, washed, and then stored in the kitchen. Pseudo stems generally only produce fruit one time. A pseudo stem that has had the fruit harvested could be cut down to make room for new productive pseudo stems. The cut down pseudo stem could be used by splitting it in half and leaving it to decompose to feed the mat. If the pseudo stem is not cut down, it will naturally die on its own. Bananas can quickly go from ripe to overripe. It's important to prevent any food waste. So share the abundance with your friends and family. Here we have a unique variety of bananas. They are called praying hands. These bananas were frozen for preservation. All right, so here we got the praying hands. Check out all the bananas are conjoined. You gotta separate them like this. Look at the bananas outlook. These are pretty ripe, so these are gonna freeze, and they're delicious. Even though the outside is dark like this, they're still they're still good to eat. It's fire. Mm -hmm. I love to make smoothies with frozen bananas. Here we have a simple recipe with frozen ice cream bananas, homegrown papaya, and organic unsweetened soy milk. Another great method of preservation is dehydration. These bananas were dehydrated for over 6 hours at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Once dehydrated, I put them in a mason jar for future snacks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and are inspired to get out there and grow bananas.